Hello everyone, Steve here from Tech Toy Tinker and Retro Arena. I wanted to do a quick video today to show you guys the changes that we've been making for Beta 10. There's still a couple bugs we gotta fix, something with HDMI and a couple other things, but we'll get that done over the next few days and then we'll be able to release it. So, for Amiga, we've added the option to use the 2021 core instead of having to use the older version. We've also added Amiga 500 and 1200. There's about 130 systems in total now, so I'm going to give you guys a quick overview. The Data East, Irem, Konami, Midway, those are all MAME arcade games. And MAME is, or Final Burn even, they have very large sets, so it makes more sense to separate them into their own categories. Per manufacturer or arcade board maker, whatever you want to call it. Excuse me. I think I might be getting a cold. I guess I'm going to go over all the systems first and then I'll talk about individual ones. As I said, there's about 130 different systems, PCs, handhelds, all in all. The theme will be updated by JetUp over the next few days as well. So, the difference here between Pico 8 and Pico 8 RA, if you're just starting to watch the videos now, this will use the RetroArch cores, which are obviously free. That would be Fake 08 and Retro 8. And then this will require you to use the paid arch 64 raspberry pi binary so you're gonna have to buy the standalone and then put that binary into the opt pico 8 location and then yeah you can play the standalone the arc os git will give you help if you need it video playback should also now be working However, for some reason, volume control is not working inside the video player, so just set it before you watch the movie or TV show or whatever you're trying to watch. I just showed in a previous video that GL is working, but I only kind of briefly glossed over that fact. So, what I'm going to do here, Saturn, first of all. We'll start off with the Yabos on Shiro. I guess that game doesn't want to work. <clears throat> Could just be a bad dump, though. I'll just try a different game. Also, the BIOS is always correctly, so I'm not super worried about that.
That sounds better. Yeah, it definitely sounds better. Except for that. I'm just going to get to the fighting for a minute here, so we can make sure it runs fine in-game. Personally, I don't, I don't care about a crackle in the menu or something. I care about the actual gameplay. Does the game run? So, let's find out. Definitely runs. Oh, you ruined him up. Perfect. Jackass. So does it run? Yes. But I recommend using 32-bit RetroArch over 64-bit. Let's try Sonic real quick, because a lot of people say it doesn't run on um, the stock build. So let's just let's see what happens here. Of course, it does run on the standalone, but let's try RetroArch. I'm not even hearing any lag in that uh, BIOS, so that's a good thing. We still got a few things to work out, but overall I'm generally very happy with the progress of the build. It's coming along quite nicely. Alright, well that one kicked me out, so for that you're going to want to go... And change it to standalone BIOS. I believe that's the one that works. Let's find out. I do recall this working here, so I think it's going to work. It's kind of weird in the intro, like it, it flashes for some reason, but once you get to the actual game menu, it should be fine. Yep, there we go. So yeah, you're going to have to <clears throat> kind of go back and forth between standalone and RetroArch Yaba Sanchiro to see what works best for you, but at least we have another way to launch games now, so we're not, if something doesn't work, you're not just stuck accepting the fact it doesn't work, you have an option to try to fix it. Which is an improvement in my opinion. I'm going to go back to the core here for a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. This video is going to be a little bit on the longer side, but Honestly, I don't care. I have things to talk about and show off and whatever, so we're going to do that. I've had some people recently suggest to me that I should kind of look more at uh, Russ's channel, Retro Game Corps. Uh, he and I are friends, by the way. We have been for a long time. But they want to see more production and flash out of my videos. But in my honest opinion, it's a waste of my time. That's not what I do. 
My job is to do this, to make the operating system and the software. I don't really have a lot of interest in YouTube. I upload videos as a way to showcase what's going on and let people know what the progress and stuff is because some people appreciate being able to watch a build in progress. So, I don't really feel the need to put more time into my videos and add more production value to them and need help from other people. And That's just not my, not my thing. So yeah, as you can see, a couple games just didn't want to run in RetroArch. Some run fine. So that's kind of how Saturn is right now. you got two or three different methods you can use to try running the game. Dreamcast. Personally, I actually really like Gauntlet Legends. I thought it was one of the best versions, that and the NES version. The arcade version was, was cool, too. But being born in the mid-80s, I, I prefer the the NES version of Gauntlet. I wasn't allowed to go to the arcade until I was like 7 or 8. But I had a NES and a Genesis. Keep in mind, when you play Dreamcast, you have to configure the controller to your liking by pressing L2, R2. And then, go to your controller information here. And you kind of got to set it up like you want it. Now this here, how it's not full screen, you can actually deal with that too. Oops, where did I click there? Suspend screensaver. Yeah, whatever, I don't care. I don't want that either though. So, as you can see, there's a lot of different options here. You can also enter a, a custom. Now it's just too big. But the, the point here is that you don't have to... If you don't like the size of it, you don't have to deal with... I'm going to leave it like this because you know I'm taking too much time here. My point is that if you don't like it, you can go in and fix it. You can make it whatever you want it to be. was a little unnecessarily loud, but whatever. You know, I'm 
curious. <clears throat> I happen to know that game works fine, but I also heard a little bit of crackle. So now I'm curious if the same is true for Dreamcast, as it is with Saturn. What if we just use RetroArch32? Does that fix the crackle? Let's find out. Why, yes, it did. So, <clears throat> my takeaway from that is use RetroArch 32 for Saturn and Dreamcast. I assume that would carry over to Naomi and Atmos Wave as well. I mean, we'll find out. Just give me a minute. I kind of want to do this. Should have picked medium. This game's quick as I recall. Damn. That's not the right punch, obviously. Oh, vibrate works. Nice. I don't know if you guys can hear that in the video. I'm sure you can. I forgot we applied a rumble fix. So yeah, your Dreamcast games will vibrate. Let's go check out Naomi and Atmos Wave quickly before we wrap this video up. So, I'm going to go right for 32-bit RetroArch right from the start. RetroArch 32. RetroArch 32. And Dirty Pigskin Football is harder to run than Dolphin <clears throat> Dolphin Blue, so I'm going to just run Dirty Pigskin. It's a better test, in my opinion. Well, right now we're stuck on a white screen, so that's not promising. Nope, not promising at all. <clears throat> I'm just going to restart instead of messing with it. It's probably faster. So, just to explain something in the boot process here. The first time you turn on your device, the screen's going to turn blue. It's going to say Easy ROMs is expanding, blah, blah, blah. That's expanding your SD1 card to take up the entire space. It doesn't matter if you use a 16, 32, 64, 256, whatever. The ROMs partition will take up the remaining space. You have 16 gigabytes, or 15, I guess, allotted for your internal storage and the rest will be for your ROMs. Easy ROMs partition, whether it's it's XFAT, so it's viewable on Windows. And uh yeah, that's just how that works. But regardless of whether you want to use a second SD card or not, it's gonna auto expand anyways, just to take up all the space on your SD one. Now where was I here? Uh, Jetup will be adding these in the next few days, I'm sure. Uh, just for fun, let's try Dolphin. <clears throat> Better not freeze again. I'll be irritated.
I guess it just didn't like that particular version of Dirty Pigskin Football. I'll try it in 64 after. Keep in mind, I'm using the old files, the bin and LST files. I'm not using the main zips, which could be the problem. So just for fun. I went way past where I needed to go. Oops. Alright, so anyways, just for fun. <coughs> I'm go to Atmos Wave here. Make it Retro Arch Flycast. And then we'll click, oh, I don't want Rumblefish. We'll try Rumblefish first, but I wanted to do Dirty Pigskin. Welcome. We're not going to play Rumblefish, but it works fine. I'm assuming Dirty Pigskin Football will too. So, for Dreamcast, Naomi, Atmos Wave, Saturn, kind of got to pick your poison and sort of test out what works better with what game. Now that there's multiple ways to launch something. I'm not even hearing any lag here. Let's try a quick, a quick pass or two, and then we'll move over to Naomi. So yeah, <clears throat> that runs okay. You just got to use RetroArts 64 instead of 32. Whereas with Saturn, 64 seems to run better. Or sorry, with Saturn, 32-bit works better. With Dreamcast, 64-bit seems to work better. Uh, Monkey Ball's not that hard to run, so I'm not going to waste our time and try that. Go with Gigawing. This should still be set to 32. I didn't change it, so we'll see here. For me personally, having Naomi Atmos Wave is a huge bonus. I really like the Sega arcade games. And even with Dreamcast. We don't have a joystick, but with fighting games and such, you can get away with the D-pad just by remapping how it works. And it's already done by default in the next beta, but... Certain games you can get away with not using a joystick for. Even Super Nintendo, really, like with Mario 64 and certain games like Clay Fighters and stuff like that, you can also probably get rid of the D-pad and make it a joystick and bind it that way. You won't be able to do the whole library, but, you know, you will be able to do some games. And for me, with N64 on this device, all I really want is stuff like Clay Fighters and fighting games. Maybe Mario, but like, other than that, I'm not, I'm not trying to play N64 on this device. If I can play a few games, cool. But for me, that's about the tip of the iceberg. I'm trying to think if anything else needed to be talked about here. Oh, yeah. So, we'll go to Nintendo here. We just use Mario 3 for this. Actually, I have to start over here. We need to go back to RetroArch first. Open RetroArch. And then we want to go to settings. 
user interface and go to ozone. All right, so first of all, that does look a little bit small, but it's also something you can fix in user interface. Go to scale factor here. Make it, we'll try that, no, higher. 1.2. Eh, that's good, but I'm gonna push it a little higher for the sake of this video. There we go. So again, you wanna go to settings, user interface, appearance, and then change your scale factor to whatever you want it to be. Okay, good enough. Now we can exit this and we can go back to Nintendo. I'll use Bomberman. It doesn't really matter what game I use to show you this. So you want to open your RetroArch menu and go into the quick menu, which will be by default. Click on shaders. And then you want to go to load preset. Click on the shaders folder. And then you're going to want to go through these and kind of pick what likes what you like sorry just be aware that some of them are very cpu intensive and you might not enjoy it <clears throat> may want to turn it off depending on what it is but with crt shaders and such for me personally like so you can see it added all the scan lines to the screen here like you were watching on a, a tube tv Or, where is it? It just cleans it up a bit and kind of makes the resolution higher. There's a lot of different shaders in these folders. You kind of just pick what you like personally. GBA color motion blur. I'm not going to go super in-depth with it. I'm just giving you an idea of what's available to you. You clearly wouldn't want to use that last one I just did, but an example. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up there. I just wanted to show you guys that uh, all this different stuff is working and tell you a little bit about how the build works now. The Beta 10 image has been sent out on the Discord servers to users to test and kind of report bugs so we can get ready for the public release. And uh, well, like I said, we have a bug with HDMI. It kind of affects the, the screen is letterboxed almost, but instead of being, you know, like an actual letterbox, it's just kind of in the corner in a box on your tv so we got to fix that but other than that most things are generally ready as always though thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe sorry the video took a little bit longer but it is what it is i had a lot to say take care